Right, good morning, everybody. Uh, before I, I look at what we're going to be talking about today, I just want to explain uh, how this talk fits in with so, so, some, some other talks we, we've got here today. So I submitted this talk, which is, as you probably guessed when you read the description, uh, a talk about the, the perception of CloudStack and some of the awareness challenges we've got of CloudStack. And my good friend Mark also submitted a very similar talk. Uh, so we agreed to do a sort of tag team on this. Okay, so I'm going to do the talk I, I had planned. What Mark's going to do afterwards in the next session is run a discussion, a forum, a conversation around how, as a community, we address uh, some of the, 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 the problems that I'm going to outline, some of the challenges we've got. So if you can, please try and come to the next session in this room. They're effectively... Uh, a, a combined effort between the two of us. Afterwards, Aaron and Ken, are you guys in here? No, nope. somewhere else. Uh, are going to be talking about the use of social uh, media uh, to, to, to promote projects like CloudStack. So those of you interested in the, in the promotion of this technology, uh, its market development, this room is the place to be for, for, the, for the next three sessions. Okay, so who am I? Uh, I run a company called Shape Blue. Uh, all we do is go out and consult and build and support and design cloud stack based environments. Now, obviously, that means we, we get involved with lots of different storage technologies and network technologies and layer on tooling on, on, on top of cloud stack, but the pivotal, the pivotal focus for us as a company is Apache cloud stack. Been working with the technology personally for a couple of years. I'm now a PMC member uh, and a committer in the project, and I just want to make clear. I'm talking to you today as a, as a community member, as a guy who runs a, a company that's involved in this project. I'm not talking with my official PMC hat on here. Some of these are personal opinions I have about some of the things we need to do in the project. I run the, the user group that uh, Chip name checked in his, his keynote earlier uh, over in Europe. And my background is I run businesses, okay? A long, long time ago, I was a, a developer and a, a sysadmin, but for the last 15 years, I've been running businesses. So what you're not going to hear is a particularly technical talk today. You're going to hear somebody who's got a, a vested interest in this technology uh, succeeding uh, and having the place in the market that it should. And I do some other things in my, in my spare time as well. So what qualifies me to talk about perception, to talk about marketing of, of CloudStack? We got uh, 451, the analyst people, a bit like Gartner. Uh, they, they did a, a company uh, analysis of Shape Blue a few months ago. They did one of these standard market reports and published it out to, to lots of people. And they did a strengths, weaknesses, a, a SWOT analysis. And these were the threats and weaknesses for the company that I run. They said lots of great things about us, but the, the, this, this was the negative stuff. And if you want to just read those, it basically says... This company is intimately involved in CloudStack. It depends on CloudStack, okay? My livelihood depends on CloudStack surviving, and therefore I think I'm qualified to talk about uh, how we should make sure that this project continues to grow and continues to, de to develop the way it should. Okay, the title of this talk, CloudStack Never Heard of It. Uh, <laughs> this was a real uh, comment was made to me by, I can't name check the guy because he'd be very embarrassed, but a architect at a very large organization in the UK uh, who were evaluating different, I think his title was actually a cloud architect, evaluating different technologies. Uh, we had a conversation with them and we said, look, we're doing most of our work with Apache CloudStack these days, and his comment was, I've never heard of it. Okay? At the time, CloudStack was an Apache project. I mean, this was only about a year ago. We had lots and lots of deployments. We had lots of people talking about their use of CloudStack. But an architect who's about to go and build an infrastructure as a service platform, okay, had not heard of Apache CloudStack. And that comment stuck with me for the last year, that we have got a problem. We've got a perception problem. Uh, that's the invisible man, for those of you who can't work out what that is. We've got a perception problem. Uh, we've got good technology but people don't seem to have heard of this technology. The market doesn't seem to be as aware as it should be of our technology. And that's the focus of what I'm going to talk about today, is trying to look and analyze why that is, okay? Uh, first of all, before it all gets uh, doom and gloom, and I talk about a lot of the, the challenges and the problems we've got, there is a lot of good news, okay? <laughs> I'm going to basically repeat a lot of the stuff that was said in the keynote this morning. It's great software. 
It's production grade. Uh, the legacy of CloudStack coming from a, a, a startup that was then acquired by Citrix that was then donated to the, uh, to the Apache Foundation basically means we've got deployment. This is not a, a vision that somebody had in terms of let's go and build a bit of software and we'll think about what it does in two years' time. It came donated to Apache with real-world customer deployments and significant deployments as well. This was a comment uh, from John Gillum, the CTO of, of BT Cloud. He came and spoke at our user group a couple of weeks ago. He said CloudSat was a game changer as far as they, they could see. Okay? We've got very big deployments. We've got very serious organizations, like Hugo was saying earlier, who run their businesses based on Apache CloudStack. Speaking of which, had to get a logo slide in at some point. Uh, the users of of CloudStack or commercial distributions of CloudStack. We're not fussy over whose uh, distribution they're using, but we've got a lot of very significant organizations. Now that slide's been around for a few years, I think, and last year we did a, for the CoLab conference in Santa Clara, we did a survey, uh, which was a community survey. We got a, a questionnaire set up in SurveyMonkey and tried to promote it out through Twitter, and we found a whole load of new users, okay? And what was really interesting is that we had a lot of people respond to that survey. Some of them are significant names who tick the box to say, look, don't talk about our usage. We can't talk about this, or we don't want to talk about this. Uh, but we're using this technology, and we're relying on it. Okay? So we've got great software. We've got a great baseline in terms of installations, in terms of it driving production deployments. And then the other important thing we've got, of course, is a, a very, very active vibrant open source community, okay? We've got user groups popping up all over the place. We've got, what's it, nearly 400 people turned up to, to, to this conference. We've got a, uh, other conferences uh, coming up. We've got a really, really good community. And it's a community that's driven by users. So this graph, is some of the analysis that Sebastian does once a quarter, shows that, you know, as our development activity and our number of developers increases, yeah, that's based on the number of users, okay? So what we haven't got is, you know, a lot of major vendors just trying to develop a piece of software for the future. We've got people in this room who are actually using the software, okay? And that's driving feature development within the software. So, all good. Everything's rosy. Uh, what's the problem? You know, we've got a great community. We've got great software. We're all here at a great conference. A few beers last night. What's... You know, what, what, what are the challenges we've actually got? And I thought of a way of, of just trying to, to define it. Uh, any physicists in the room? Anybody want to answer this one? Come on, I'll give you a $1 prize if anybody can. No? A free sticker for your laptop? It's critical mass, okay? And that's, I think, the key thing that we need to talk about with the Apache CloudStack community is reaching a point where we have achieved critical mass as a project, okay? Now, we all know that one of our major contributors is the guys who very kindly donated this software to us a couple of years ago, or two and a half years ago, that, that being Citrix. And we know Citrix are our biggest contributor, okay? And Citrix put a lot of work into supporting the Apache, uh, the Apache project Okay? But we need to get to a point where this project is self-fulfilling and it's achieved critical mass. We're getting there, but we've got some way to go yet. Okay? The other issue we've got is this is an asymmetric situation. Now, in the open source world, we don't like to criticize other projects. We always caveat things. We're saying the guy's doing some work over there. We're not competitors. They're, they're, just, they're just doing some stuff, and they're doing some great work. But we have got a situation. And this is just a simple Google Trends, and everybody will shout me down for just using Google Trends to, to demonstrate a point. But in terms of searches for CloudStack, there we go. Donated to the Apache Software Foundation. Up it goes uh, over the years and continues to rise. We overlay over the top of that. Another great project doing great work with a lot of very uh, useful volunteers in it. And you can see we have a fundamental asymmetric situation in our market. Okay? This is an open source conference. We don't talk about markets. We don't talk about these things. But it is. It's a market. It's an IaaS market. Okay? And the challenge we have here is that 
with so much momentum coming from a another project, we have the issue that we're not necessarily recruiting developers as quickly as we could. We're not bringing in new users and people adopting the software as quickly as we could because it's an asymmetric situation. So the last one I'll do, talking about other projects that are doing a load of great work. Anybody seen this before? This was uh, Boris, what's his name, from uh, Mirantis, did this sketch a couple of years ago, which I didn't really like at the time, so I thought I'd just redo it. Spin them around a little bit. Uh, but I, it, does, it, it does sometimes feel like this a little bit. Okay? There is a lot of great work, and the individual projects working within the OpenStack Foundation are doing some fantastic things, but the market perception is this little group of rebels on the side, here we are, who are doing things a different way. Okay? And I'm going to look at some of the underlying uh, challenges we have in terms of uh, and, and what we can do to try and sort of rectify this problem. One more thing on this. Uh, we've been going out as a company and sort of selling CloudStack for the last couple of years in terms of not physically selling the software, but actually going out and telling people this is the software they should adopt. And we often come across other open source technologies and people say, well, why is CloudStack better than them? And this is what we've been telling people, for, for, which is true uh, for the last couple of years. We've got a production grade, easy to configure, easy to deploy technology. Uh, we will get you if you're a service provider, we'll get you in the market more quickly. You're an enterprise, you'll be serving your users more quickly than using other technologies. That's starting to change. Yeah? Other projects aren't standing still. Other projects are overcoming the challenges they have in terms of speed of deployment and ease of deployment. So that defense play does not continue to, help to be valid uh, maybe over the next, uh, next year, couple of years. Aside, of the, aside from the fact that there's other people who are doing a lot of other things and are making this an asymmetric market, what can we do? Okay? As a community, what can we actually do uh, to, to overcome these problems? I've got a set of problems here that I'm going to explain to you that I think we need to overcome. Quite deliberately, I'm not going to discuss what I think the answers should be. Uh, I've got some very strong opinions on some of these. That's what we're going to do in the next session, or Mark's going to do in the next session. Uh, first thing, I'm going to say some pretty straight to the point and blunt stuff about some of the ways we're, thing, ways we're, we're working on, on some, some elements of our project. Uh, this is my opinion. Please don't shoot me down for it. Okay? It's just the way I see it. And a few of you in the room do know that I have quite direct views about things. I don't mince my words very often. Problem number one. Apache CloudStack doesn't engage customers very well. Okay. So, let's think, what is a customer? Okay. In the ASF, uh, we talk about users, we talk about contributors, we talk about committers, we talk about PMC members. There is no concept of a customer. Now, I, I actually used this slide uh, uh, in Santa Clara in July, and... Joe, I think, sat at the front of the room and said, well, Joe, a, a customer is, is a user. That's, that, that's what, you know, it's a user of the software, okay? I don't think so. I think there is a, a new role developed as open source becomes more widely adopted in, in enterprise and traditional business environments. I think we probably need to start to think about a customer. That's the definition. That's what ASF says about a user. I'm not going to read it all out, but it basically says users are very important people. Without them... Nobody's using our product. Yeah? A percentage of those users are going to become contributors. A percentage of those contributors are going to become uh, committers, et cetera, et cetera. And the world will continue to, the product will continue to, to develop. I don't think users are necessarily the most important people. Okay? I think if you stand back and look at this in terms of technology adoption, it's the people who are actually making the selections or influencing the people who then use our software. Okay? Now, these are business guys. Yeah. These, are, these are guys who are saying, okay, go and look at this technology. We've heard good things about it. Go and do a proof of concept with this technology. Okay? And unless we as an open source community start to think about how we engage with customers, not users, then I think we're going to continue to have some problems. What I tried to do is sort of analyze the adoption, 
to think of it as a life cycle of, of open source software. So, there's my pointer thing. Okay, so somebody adopts our software. Uh, they, be, by definition, become a user by the ASF definition. They may then become a contributor. They may start to write some code and give something back to the project. Percentage of them become committers. Okay, that leads to obviously development within the project. And we hope by developing new great features and stabilizing our product and developing it further, that will lead to adoption. And round it goes with the circle getting bigger and bigger and bigger and the, the software continues to develop. Okay? I think that model works for a lot of projects. I think that's worked traditionally with open source software. But we've got some challenges within CloudStack. We know we've got good software. We know we've got a great community. But to be frank, we're not seeing it adopted as quickly as we'd hope it, it, it should be. Certainly, if you put it in the context of you know, the stability, et cetera, et cetera. So we've got a blocker there. And I think the reason we've got a blocker is, in fact, this extra step sits in the middle. That we develop, but then it's the customers who choose. Okay? And these aren't necessarily guys who turn up to open source conferences in a t-shirt. Yeah? These are CIOs. These are lead architects. These are decision makers within organizations who are deciding whether to use this open source technology or not. That's what's going on here. And the problem is those guys don't just make a decision based on it's great technology. They listen to marketing. They get influenced by market perception. They get influenced by analysts. And they get engaged. So they have salesmen turning up and getting in their faces and saying, this is the best technology, you, this is the technology you want to buy. So it's this guy. This is just a random photo I Googled. I think I Googled CIO. And unfortunately, I don't know whether this is a stock image or this guy is a genuine CIO, but that is uh, what Google tells, tells me a CIO looks like. Okay, so if you accept that we have customers instead of just users who are influencing the adoption of our software, it's down to guys like this. And guys like this suddenly decide one day because their mate at the CIO's club has said to them, we need to do cloud, we need to do some orchestration, we need to automate stuff. Somebody's done a report, it makes things more efficient. And then this guy turns up, okay? And this guy's a sales guy. He's in a suit, shakes his hand. And he says, we do this. We've got products that are going to uh, sort these problems out for you. Uh, and he will tell that CIO about all the great clouds he's got. And he will show him lots of pretty pictures. This was just randomly searching on Google of men on whiteboards drawing clouds and pretty marketing collateral and uh, all sorts of reference points and case studies. He will tell him why their cloud is better than everybody, other, everybody else's and why their software is great and how he's going to get massive return on investment if he uses his technology. Okay? And he's engaging with that customer. Okay? And he'll also say, everybody else thinks we're great. Here's a magic quadrant, and we're right up here. He's basically at that level. This guy hasn't even seen the technology yet, but he's creating the perception that this is the choice that he needs to make. And then he'll show him a logo slide with all of their customers. Okay? Anybody know what that is? They're not real logos. They're football, David. Football, not soccer. Just get that, it's great. Okay, so this guy's already made the decision, yeah, based on perception, based on marketing, probably not even see, he's done some proof of concept, he obviously will, may have some, some technical support behind him in terms of choosing that technology, but that influence is there. And this is what we're up against playing in the IaaS space. We're an open source pro project, and we've got to sort of compete with this. If, however, uh, he wanted to have a look at CloudStack, there is no way of phoning CloudStack. Uh, and this is what we tend to say to them. Okay, get on the users list. Come on, we're all nice guys, okay? This is the point I'm trying to make. We engage very well with users. We're a very welcoming, friendly community, and obviously with developers. What we don't do is engage with those customers, okay? Now, some people may say, well, that's down to me to do. That's down to Citrix to do. That's down to other commercial entities around the edge. But actually, I think it's something we as a community need to look at to make sure that brand cloud stack is seen in the light of great graphs and lovely logo slides and all these things. Because we're an integrator. Citrix have got a commercial distribution, but, and other people will do other things with cloud stack, but we have to make sure that 
you know, I chose CloudStack. People are proud to choose CloudStack. Okay, problem number two. Uh, we are an all-volunteer organization, the Apache Software Foundation, uh, which means we rely currently on volunteer marketing. Okay? That isn't good enough. Yeah? There's a lot of people doing a lot of hard work, okay? but there are other projects out there spending multi-million amounts on marketing, on promoting, on doing the nice diagrams and the nice case studies and all the stuff we just, we just flick through. And in this asymmetric world we're in, we need to do more. We need to be more professionally marketed. Next problem, once we have actually engaged customers and people have chosen our software, we have challenges about how they can support us. Now, if an organization chooses CloudStack, they will then have you know, users and maybe hopefully some of those people will get involved in our project on an individual basis. Apache Software Foundation, everybody works as an individual. But how can that company or that organization who's chosen CloudStack support our project? It's very, very difficult for them apart from donating some, getting some developers to get involved in, in, in the project and encouraging their, their, their staff to. We have the, the traditional route, a user becomes a contributor, becomes a committer, but the guy in the suit, the CIO, remember he's a customer, he's not a user. What's the progression path for him? He hasn't got, he can't write code, you know, he's not gonna spend his spare time coming and speaking at conferences like this. He's maybe got some money, he can maybe help with financially, uh, but we have some challenges around that. We'll look at those in a second. Okay, problem number four. Our largest contributor, uh, the great guys at Citrix, they have a day job. Yeah? They're, 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 a, they're a software, multi-billion dollar software company. Okay? Uh, Citrix sell Cloud Platform, which is a great product, okay? but they don't sell Cloud Stack, and I would never ask them to. But this is a, a challenge we have here. Okay? So Citrix sell Cloud Platform, okay? But how does that align from a perception and a market viewpoint if our main contributor isn't saying, we sell CloudStack? Okay? Now, I know you can't call it CloudStack uh, because it's, it's copyright of the ASF uh, Foundation. Okay? But that means down at grassroots level, this is the partners out on the street and the, the local guys out on the street, there's a misalignment. Those guys who are out selling Cloud Platform for Citrix, okay, necessarily care about Apache CloudStack, okay? There's a lot of people at Citrix that do, uh, and as I say there, that all comes for granted from, from me making these comments, okay? The initial donation, Citrix created this thing, our biggest contributor, and there's a lot of guys doing a lot of tremendous work in this project, but we have down at grassroots, out on the street, a fundamental challenge there, that our largest contributor doesn't go out and promote CloudStack. Problem number five, uh, the Apache Software Foundation has an amazing governance model, yeah? And we brag about that governance model. It's a, it's a very, very strong thing, meaning people can't unduly influence the, the, the project, et cetera, et cetera. It's based on meritocracy, okay? But I think it's a fundamental issue that as a company, a user of CloudStack cannot make, or a integrator or somebody cannot make a financial contribution into that project. I don't want to influence the project necessarily. I would like to give the project some financial support to get some students involved or do some marketing or help develop that, and I can't do that, okay? Uh, that's a, a very big can of worms to open, but that is, a, that is a challenge. The traditional commercial model for Apache software has always been that that side of things would be done by the commercial guys who are then making money, the companies, i.e. not done by, by ASF. But CloudStack's in a funny situation. We've got the asymmetrical thing, and also what we haven't got is a whole load of vendors who are looking to make money. We've got big users, we've got service providers, and big enterprises who are using the software who would like to support that community, okay? And they can't financially. They can find some developers, they can contribute some time, et cetera, et cetera, but they can't just write a check. And that's, uh, I think, a problem. Next problem, uh, and I think, I guess this is the same in every uh, open source project. Uh, not enough of our users go on to become contributors. I forget what the, the figures are. Somebody's done some analysis in terms of for everybody who takes your software and uses it, something like 1% are actually going to start giving stuff back. So that's maybe something we, we, we just need to accept. But we know there are some very significant organizations out there using CloudStack 
who want to see it continue to develop, to develop and, and be relevant, who are not contributing. They're not here. They're not on the lists. They're not writing code. Okay? And that's a challenge we've got, and that's something we need to fix. Okay. Uh, the last one, last problem I see, and this is a very specific, this isn't a strategic thing. We work on mailing lists. Uh, mailing lists are old and clunky, uh, but I fully understand why we have mailing lists. Okay? It means the IP, the knowledge that's in those mailing lists isn't sitting in somebody's one particular organization's infrastructure. It's distributed amongst everybody in the community. It makes sense. Okay? My issue with mailing lists is if I am new, I'm a customer or a user looking to find out. I don't know anything about CloudStack. Okay? I'm expecting to go and find forums and see stuff going on. Okay? And this was a genuine comment. Again, it was about a year ago. Uh, again, I won't name check the guy. But he had been looking at doing some integration with, uh, with CloudStack and stumbled into some sort of forums or something he found and couldn't find anybody discussing it because it's buried in mailing lists. Okay? Now, we use Mark Mail to archive those mailing lists, but if I'm new to this and you know, I want to, uh, to set CloudStack up for the first time, we've got a lot of good knowledge on, on, the, on the CloudStack website, but our mailing lists are something you need to explicitly opt into. Okay? And therefore, if I'm not involved in that community in the first place, it's hard to find information out from, from, those, from those mailing lists. Okay, we're, uh, Ryan, what time do we, t can I, do I talk to? 11 or five past? 11? Five, five more minutes, great. Okay, so that's just about everything I'm going to talk about. Uh, just to summarize, we've got brilliant software. We've got a, a vibrant and growing community. Uh, I think we've got perception and awareness problems uh, of our technology. Uh, our structure doesn't let us engage well with, with customers. Okay? If you accept that there is this concept of a, of a customer, somebody who's making a, a business choice around this software, we don't engage particularly well with them. Uh, we need to more coherently, professionally market our technology. And the key thing, what I haven't done there, is discuss any solutions. I, I love just coming up with loads of problems, and then I'll give them to Mark to fix in, in the next talk. So that's just the challenges I see. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes. Any questions? Uh, bear in mind, we're going to do a discussion in the next session. So, uh, please, by, by, by all means, anybody got any questions? There's a question. Right. Sorry, the mic's not. Testing, testing. Is that good? Uh, Len Wetton with SunGarden. We're putting um, CloudStack into a product that we're rolling out now. I was actually interviewing a guy just the other day, and I asked him, what do you see the difference between CloudStack and OpenStack? And he talked to one of the charts that you showed earlier about CloudStack being easier to roll out and but he was also kind of holding that against CloudStack. And he was saying that OpenStack, it, CloudStack was a production-ready thing that we could just plug in, easy to use, but it, it was what it was. Mm. And OpenStack had more power because we could pull different components and plug them into yeah. whatever we wanted to do. And I guess I was trying to wonder if you could kind of address that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, architecture, we're, we're diving into a sort of architecture conversation, but architecturally, I, you know, the weakest thing about CloudStack is it's monolithic. Uh, and that's something a lot of people are doing a lot of work uh, to change. But in a way, that is its biggest advantage because it's one, bit of, one, one product to install, one bit of technology instead of 15 different technologies to try and cobble together. Uh, cl CloudStack will become more uh, modular. Uh, OpenStack, on the other hand, will become more coherent. You know, so they're just two, two, two trains going in opposite directions, I, I suppose. Uh, any other questions? No? Nope. Well, thank you very much. As I said, if you can make the next session, we're going to try and uh, discuss some of the, the, the solutions to, to some of these problems. Thank you. Thank you very much, Giles. Thank you.